hi to all of you a warm welcome back uh, this is the second lecture of the purine metabolism and second lecture also of the metabolic concepts uh, in this lecture of the metabolic concept we will be discussing the salvage pathway of the purine synthesis and we will be discussing some of the conversions by kinases and ribonucleotide reductases how and the final form of the uh purines and as well as pyrimidines are synthesized then some of the regulatory steps of the purine uh, biosynthetic pathway the second pathway for the synthesis of the purines is the salvage pathway as the name suggests salvage pathway involves the recovery of the bases and nucleosides which are formed from the degradation of the rna or dna and uh, uh, cells are having an ability to convert and uh, salivate them back to their uh, mononucleotide forms like for example here uh, hypoxanthine guanine and adenine are converted to respectively inosine monophosphate guanosine monophosphate and adenosine monophosphate uh, cells uh, which are not capable of de novo biosynthesis uh, utilize this pathway for the Uh, generation of the nucleotides or nucleosides for maintaining their uh, life expectancy and there are two enzymes which are involved in the salvage pathway of the purine synthesis which is hgprtase and agprtase hgprtase is hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribosyl transferase and this is uh, adenosine guanine phosphoribosyl transferase hgprtase is able to convert uh, hypoxanthine and guanine to uh, inosine and gmp whereas the agprtase converts the adenine to the amp and in turn it utilizes the prpp for the conversion this prpp is directly linked to the hypoxanthine adenine or guanine to synthesize the three nucleosides which can be utilized by brain or rbcs or leukocytes for maintaining their daily function so after the formation of the uh, monophosphates whether that is a guanine monophosphate or adenine monophosphate you have to convert them into a di form or tri form this conversion usually happens with the help of an kinases these kinases are able to utilize the atp energy and convert the uh, mononucleotides into di nucleotides first and then also convert the di nucleotides into the tri nucleotides both of these uh, reaction types are catalyzed by the kinases which are dependent on the atp for their phosphates for example here the amp when uh, reacted with the atp is uh, able to produce two adps then these adps are converted into atp form as well this panel shows you the uh, same kinase interconvergence uh, in a different perspective adenylate kinase will uh, synthesize the two adps from amp and atp similarly guanylate kinase will synthesize gdp and adp from gmp and atp reaction so both of these kinases are dependent on atp for their uh, convergent reactions so far uh, when we synthesize the mononucleosides we synthesize the ribonucleosides or ribonucleotides these ribonucleotides uh, are uh, needed to be converted into deoxy types so that we can synthesize or the cells can synthesize the dna as well from them this conversion is brought about by ribonucleotide reductase it does uh, these conversions during the s phase of cell cycle so s phase of cell cycle is the one where the dna synthesis takes place so ribonucleotide reductase are well functional and highly expressive during this stage for the conversion of the newly synthesized uh, pu purine ribonucleotides or pyrimidine ribonucleotides into the deoxy types ribonucleotide reductase is actually a tetramer which contains uh, two non identical dimeric units which are r1 and r2 so r1 is present twice and r2 is present twice to make it as a tetramer and it is specific for the reduction of the purine uh, nucleoside diphosphates and pyrimidine nucleoside diphosphates to their deoxy forms so ribonucleotide uh, reductases are able to convert for example uh, atp to datp or adp to dadp 
So everything which is present in the ribose form or ribonucleotide form is able to be converted into a deoxy form so that the DNA synthesis will take place during the S phase. Uh, for doing this function, uh, it is dependent upon two factors. One is thioredoxin, which is always attached to the ribonucleotide reductase enzymes and the NADPH, which comes from the HMP shunt. This is a reducing equivalent, which donates its hydrogens to thioredoxin. So the immediate donor is the thioredoxin, which remains associated with the ribonucleotide uh, reductases and uh, helps in the reduction of the two prime hydroxyl group into the uh, deoxy form during the reaction. And uh, this is brought about by the help of a thioredoxin, which is in the reduced form. It accepts uh, and gets um, oxidized uh, to form a disulfide bond during this reaction. And water molecule is uh, release during this reaction and this uh, bound thioredoxin uh, oxidized form is then uh, replenished back with the help of the NADPH which is uh, donated by HMP shunt within the cell. So uh, this is an interdependence between the two enzymes ribonucleotide reductase and thioredoxin reductase. Thioredoxin reductase helps in the furnishing of reduced form of thioredoxin to ribonucleotide reductase so that it will do its function continuously. As I told you earlier that it is a tetrameric form and it is present in the dimer of two. Uh, it is uh, having certain uh, notches which are the substrate binding sites uh, where the substrates bind to, for their own reaction. It also has certain allosteric sites where uh, it is regulated to do its function. Uh, this regulation comes by the ATP. If uh, ATP is present in higher quantities in the cell, it will uh, activate the ribonucleotide reductases by binding to them uh, allosterically and uh, ribonucleotide reductase will be able to convert more and more uh, riboform into deoxyriboforms of the nucleotides. However, if uh, deoxy ATP is present in uh, higher quantities, uh, it will tend to inhibit it allosterically as well. So this is the regulation for the ribonucleotide reductases and the control of how the conversion of ribonucleotides uh, uh, will convert, uh, get converted into a deoxy form. Whether or not to do it is uh, regulated under the effects of ATP and deoxy ATP. Last but not the least is the regulation of purine synthesis. The de novo uh, purine synthesis is regulated at four different major points. And there are four different feedback mechanisms by which the uh, synthesis of the purines are regulated within the cell. And usually the radio rates of the end products, which is actually the ADP and GM, GDP or adenylate or gonylate, uh, is regulated uh, almost in a similar uh, quantity uh, they are equivalent in uh, quantity during the synthesis of the purines the first uh, regulation of the purine synthesis is via the rate limiting step that is prpp amidotransferase catalyzed reaction this is the rate limiting step of the purine synthesis and it is inhibited uh, by the end products through feedback mechanism these end products are IMP, AMP, and GMP. When they are present in a very high quantity, they will be able to uh, regulate it uh, negatively so that uh, this uh, reaction, PRPP amidotransferase reaction, does not move forward. And hence, there will be a lesser and lesser quantity of the phosphoribosyl amine, uh, which will not be fed to the IMP pathway. And hence, uh, lesser quantity of purines will be synthesized. AMP and GMP also act synergistically uh, for this function during the regulation process. Whether AMP, GMP are present uh, alone or both are present uh, together in equal quantities, both will have the same inhibitory effect. Second important control mechanism is by the end products AMP and GMP. When GMP is uh, present in excess quantities, cell inhibits the formation of uh, itself uh, that GMP by feedback mechanism and preventing the enzyme dehydrogenase in its function so that IMP will not be converted first to XMP or it will not be converted into GMP at all. 
so it blocks its own synthesis similar action is done by amp when amp is in excess in the cell amp will go back and cause a feedback regulation of the adenylosuccinate synthetase enzyme prevent the conversion of imp to adenylosuccinate and hence prevent the amp from uh, getting synthesized so this is the second mechanism by which the regulation happens third important mechanism is by the reciprocal exchange or reciprocal arrangement of atp and gtp to regulate each other's uh, synthesis from the imp when um, atp or gtp are present in higher quantities they cause the inhibition of the others pathway for example here atp when in excess it will cause the blockage of the conversion of xanthalate to GMP and hence prevent the GMP from uh, synthesized. And similarly, the GTP when in excess, it will prevent the AMP from being synthesized so that they will each other regulate their ratio within the cell. Final regulation, which is the fourth regulation mechanism of purine synthesis is by itself the first pathway or the first reaction of conversion in the purine synthesis which is the activation of the ribose 5-phosphate although it is the critical uh, reaction but PRPP since uh, is not uh, only utilized in the purine synthesis it forms the last uh, step of the regulation mechanism uh, hence uh, the end products which are IMP, AMP and GMP will be able to inhibit this uh, reaction as well during the regulation process and prevent the uh, conversion of uh, ribose to PRPP. This PRPP uh, will then be in lesser quantity so that the GMP and AMP will not be able to form during the synthesis process. These were the essential aspects of the purine metabolism. In the next lecture, we will be doing the pyrimidine metabolism in depth. If you like this video, do visit my uh, Amazon page for the number of different kinds of books which I have published. Uh, you can use them and order them in both Kindle and paperback format. And do subscribe to my channel uh, for further uh, videos which I will upload in due time.